What's going on? Welcome back. Today, we're going to do our chapter four review slash discussion for Astro Royale. So let's get into it. We actually didn't get a chapter last Sunday due to Gold Week in Japan, and man, have the fans been waiting. I don't want to see any more time, so let's start. The last chapter left off with Hebrew and Tarasu deciding they need to get the brothers back on their side, and they set out to retrieve the first one and convince Karan, the 10th adopted son, who climbed his way up the ranks by pure skill alone. Now, this chapter starts with Hebrew and Tarasu making their way to Quran when, in the streets, a purse snatcher kind of catches their sight. Um, and it, it seems as if they were going to help in this moment, yet they were beat to the punch by a member of the Sanmin Ropai, or the Three Faces Six Arms in translation. It seems Ikubukuro has been safe despite the police being scrambled after the meteor strike, all thanks to Quran. It's shown that he brought all these delinquents together and formed this security squad to keep everyone safe called the Salmon Ropai. Next page, we see Hebrew and Tarasu arrive at Club Asura, the Ikubukuro branch. They were stopped outside by some bouncers, but they later snuck inside. Uh, we see a little bit of comedy relief here with Tarasu being called a name he doesn't like and Hebrew dancing, which kind of lightens up the mood of the chapter. So I appreciate it. Uh, it. He really reminds me of Takemichi, by the way, in a good way, just by the way he was dancing and moving. But maybe it's just Ken's art style, bro. I don't know. He definitely gives Takemichi vibes. I don't think I'm the first one to say that anyway. And I don't want to keep comparing the two, but... I <laughs> I'm comparing greatness with greatness, you know, so it is what it is. Um, as they're in the club, it seems like there's a fight going on, um, which is soon put to rest by Quran. And we get a cold ass panel here, by the way. I'm right behind you. I can only imagine how fast he is in this actual moment. Uh, it just makes me want to see it animated so bad, man. Uh, Quran pretty much packs up six guys without even breaking a sweat or changing his face at all. Uh, after all, he is the family's number one street fighter, so, I mean, this is to be expected, really. Uh, in the club, he kind of saves the party, and the party continues, and Hebrew goes to talk to him. And as the conversation starts, disappointingly, he refuses the invitation to join Hebrew, but not of his own volition, but by rank. Uh, as we now find out, Quran actually isn't the top dog of this branch, but his previous second in command, the weakest sibling, Ko. It's now revealed Quran lost leadership due to losing a throwdown with Ko, but how could that even be possible? Is what I was thinking the whole time before he whipped out his Astro 2 pages later. With four arms in the Astro 2, and I quote, smash everything to pieces, beginning to make sense how Quran actually lost. The chapter ends with Hebrew looking at Ko in disgust and challenging him to a throwdown. Perfect. Cause you're the first person I wanted to kill, you coat till riding brat. That's the same thing he said in chapter one, and I bet he's been waiting these weeks. He's been waiting probably years to do this to Hebrew, and I think this is finally the time he believes he can do it with this Astro. Now, given the first chapter, this is looking to be a crazy fight, and I predicted last chapter that we'd get a 2v2, but I don't really believe that Karan's gonna fight now, do uh, or fight Hebrew and Tarasu. Uh, unless ordered to by Ko, which I think he probably will actually. So I don't know. Maybe he actually will fight. Who knows, man? Uh, so we might be seeing like a, I don't want to do this, but I have to situation. Um, and I, I hope this does happen for the sake of the story, because I think Tarasu could potentially lose with how, you know, good it's or how built up Ko or Quran is seeming to be. Uh, and it, it'd be a great motivator for Hebrew if Tarasu loses or something. Um, that's objectively though. Subjectively, I love Tarasu and I don't want to see him hurt. Uh, this chapter wasn't anything too insane, but I do appreciate the small twist with Karan being dethroned and the weakest sibling gaining an Astro to move him up in the ranks. So it's definitely going to be satisfying to see him knock down a peg or two. Uh, hopefully this happens next week, but for now, this is all we got. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below in the Discord in the description. But before I let y'all go, I need to say something that kind of struck me as I was reading the leaks and even more so after reading the chapter. Go ahead and click off the video here if you don't want Tokyo Avenger spoilers. Um, so thank you all for watching and bye. <laughs> so now for the Tokyo Rev people, I have a theory here. I'm just going to throw around some ideas. Maybe call me crazy. Call me a reacher. It is what it is. Uh, I'm not saying I believe anything. I'm just kind of giving theories here. But a small tangent. During this page, we kind of see someone that looks like Kisaki. Uh, really extremely similar to Kasaki. So, there are still many people, many people, who believe Hanma was either the second time leaper or had an extremely similar power. Now, 
For my head cannon, I fully believe it's completely viable for him to have either been the second time leaper and dropped out of the story due to him being like a neutral and only craving entertainment and fun, not being evil. Kisaki being one of the triggers, the only trigger and is now dead, are just a person that made Hanma go down the chaotic neutral path, the path of being influenced. Or Kisaki having the power or a similar power himself. Furthermore, I believe TR and AR could be connected 100%. There could be two Tom Leaper powers, which can be passed on, similar to one for all. It's fiction, so despite what will be confirmed there is as of now, this could either take place in the future or the past. Either. Either series could. It doesn't matter. Now, going back to my original point, this figure in this panel, in this chapter, could either be Kisaki's grandfather or his grandson. Think about that. Now, going off the rails a little bit, it could be Kasaki. It could be Kasaki traveled to a future universe, timeline, or throughout the multiverse. Okay, we are talking about 50 years back or 50 years forward here, or to another universe completely. Without ruining what Tokyo Avengers is, so take this with a grain of salt because it's fiction and real world physics do not apply, so take this with a grain of salt. I don't believe this, but I feel like it's fun to theorize. Without ruining what Tokyo Avengers is, and putting when without putting hypothetical science aside remembering or remember that every timeline is still there actually takamichi died to the train shinichiro drowned mikey committed unalive so did shinichiro takamichi died on the final battle to the sword all those are alternate timelines in which someone lost and was left by the mc or the villain to go do something in which they could win all these timelines exist all these things exist just as the picture with hulk and all that with the Tom Stones, all those branch timelines, that's what we're talking about here. Just as the original timeline exists where Goku dies, you know? Takamichi is simply hopping to a different branch, so it would be completely viable for Kasaki to have done the same 50 years in the future, 50 years in the past, or to another universe. Anyway, I did go off the rails, and this is kind of crazy, but I love theorizing about this stuff, man. I honestly can't stop when it comes to stuff like this. Uh, anyway... Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Um, anyway, I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, make sure to come subscribe. I hope to talk to you guys soon. See you next week. Have a good day. Peace.